In the Facebook post, you said those complexes were not under the control of the owners. What do you mean by that, and what does a path forward look like? Well, that they had uh, chased the property managers off the property. That, that there, was some, there was a criminal element that intimidated the property manager who left the property, and then it was that property manager that was responsible for collecting rent <laughs> from, the, uh, from the tenants. Uh, he left the property, and so um, what we need to do is, is figure out how to you know, bring it back under uh, the control of the owner of the property. And so uh, there's a, a meeting with representatives of the owners uh, on Thursday, uh, and I'll be participating in that meeting. You say they chased off the property owners. Who are they? Oh, I, I think it was um, uh, gang members at some level. Um, you know, the criminal elements who had banded together. I think that in terms of my briefing for law enforcement, what they've told me is that, you know, un sadly, when you, there's so much criminality in Venezuela, and that it, it seems that in some of the, those criminal elements have come up here, and that, uh, for instance, uh, Venezuela does not cooperate with the United States with our immigration services when it comes to sharing criminal histories. So it's difficult to vet people at the border. Uh, obviously, I don't like the policies at the border. But that um, it seems like whenever, you know, the, the pattern here in these properties is that when you have a concentration of Venezuelan migrants, it seems to be a target-rich environment for a criminal element to come in and to exploit them. And so it, it, it seems that that, when, you know, as we, obviously right now we're just trying to resolve the situation, but once resolved, we want to we wanna step back and say, how do we get here? I mean, how is it that we got here? Um, the city of Aurora um, chose not to be involved uh, in, in the migrant crisis. I mean, we just didn't, we, that we, uh, um, uh, we didn't feel it, you know, this was a, board, this was a, a, a policy problem at the border. Um, it needed to be resolved by the federal government. It's a federal problem. So we chose not to expend our own resources uh, on it, uh, you know, despite requests from the Denver mayor. And we chose not to be a con conduit for um, uh, federal or state, res uh, you know, resources coming down. That, uh, but it, what, we, what I believe happened, but we haven't confirmed this yet, is that, that the owner potentially working with some nonprofits uh, who were receiving state and federal dollars to help migrants place them there in a concentrated way that created a problem. But that is unconfirmed. That is not confirmed yet. Have you been able to confirm any Tren de Aragua activity within those complexes? I think the view is kind of mixed on that. Quite frankly, that part is not relevant to me. Now, the DEA has confirmed to me that there are Trinde uh, Aragua elements that are involved in fentanyl distribution uh, in and around this area. That is of deep concern to me. But I think it's whenever you have organized crime, it's organized crime. And it, and it has to be dealt with accordingly. And so we have, whether it's few criminal bandits coming together, or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, Trende Aragua, uh, what, what matters is crime is being committed and, and these people are being exploited. Um, since it's not confirmed, we can't say how prevalent or how widespread the activity of TDA might be in Aurora, correct? I, I don't think we know at this time. I mean, I think uh, uh, the only confirmation that I received is really from uh, DEA, uh, you know, um, and that uh, involved in the distribution of fentanyl. Is there a reason why it's tricky to confirm their presence? I know a lot of people have already jumped to that conclusion on social media. Is there a reason why it's hard to confirm that? You know, I, I don't know. I think people are excited about that, oh, it's a transnational gang. And, um, you know, I'm obviously concerned about it, but, um, you know, quite frankly, to me personally, what, what matters is we get these people off the street in, in whatever affiliation they have. They're bad. <laughs> I need them off the street. Um, 
Do we know if there have been any threats to locals or residents that relate to these apartment complexes? Yeah, we, uh, uh, there have been reports that I've received um, where um, in, the, in the building that I was at, in the buildings that I was at um, uh, yesterday, uh, one of the officers talked about uh, kind of a home invasion of one of the apartments where it was broken into, the individual in the apartment was uh, uh, forced to leave the apartment, give up the, leave the apartment and give up her car keys. Uh, the vehicle was recovered uh, and, and when she came back to the apartment, and this is, an, this is not a formal report I'm giving you, this is just what an officer told me yesterday, uh, was that they'd already put, somebody put a family in there in what was her apartment uh, when she came back to get her things. So, um, and that was in the, the Dallas uh, property, street property. Would that at all be connected to that viral video that Fox 31 first published? That I don't know. Okay. Um, have you had any information though that Tren de Agua, Aragua is operating in these complexes? No, I haven't. No. no. So. But again, I, I think that what is relevant is that there are criminals that, that seem to be working together that 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 are um, you know committing crimes to me that's what's relevant we got to get them we got to get them out of there if there's not gang activity in the buildings why are we seeing these videos of people with large well armed I think guns? What, I mean I, I think that there is gang activity whether it's Trinde out our I can't that I don't know is there a public safety concern for people living in Aurora outside of these complexes no well I think we always have pockets of areas that I'm concerned about um, that have been problematic. I was just up in, uh, um, on my Facebook page, I think you can look back not very long ago, I think uh, probably a week or two, I was up in the um, Havana Colfax area where we lost the uh, Walmart, uh, but that wasn't uh, related certainly to these incidents. That was, uh, unfortunately, that was um, about prostitution. It was, it's about drug dealing, it's about homelessness. So who are the owners of these properties and what action, if any, has the city taken since 2019 to try to regain some kind of sense of control under these properties? Well, I think that um, they certainly advise the, the property owners about what courses of action that they can take uh, to work with, with APD. And so uh, in terms of reporting, in terms of letting us know, in terms of identifying who the bad actors are. And who are the owners? Oh, do you know who the owners are? The name? So it's CBZ is the name of the company. CBZ. But I, I, I couldn't tell you who the name of the specific owners are uh, in CBC, CBZ. We've been doing stories on the apartments off of Gnome Street for years now. Is there anything else being done to hold the owners accountable when it comes to that specific location? Well, on Gnome Street, the now, I mean, I think there's a pattern on all these properties. I mean, that you know, I'm gonna be blunt that I think it's an out of state slumlord and hasn't maintained the properties. Uh, there's been you know, reports of criminality in the property or, or just um, crimes, com criminal behavior before the migrant uh, crisis uh, in, these, in these properties. No, it was probably a little bit different, and to the extent that. Nome really, for a very long time, had habitability concerns that were greater than the others. And so I can remember being pressed by the tenants uh, in some of these, um, I want to say, um, community activist uh, groups to, to come and meet with the tenants at Nome uh, and listen to their concerns about that the property wasn't maintained and the habitability concerns. And that was over a year ago, I remember doing that, uh, that I went there with uh, Council Member Angela Lawson. Uh, and so we, we met with the tenants and I think a lawyer from um, with some nonprofit uh, to, that was there to assist them. And um, it was just all about, there was just a constant, constant tension between the city, well obviously between the tenants, 
but between the city and the owners in terms of not keeping up the property. Uh, and so eventually the decision was made to close the property. That um, over habitability concerns, um, if we have to close, now there are growing habitability concerns in the other properties just because you don't have trash removal, you don't have these things. But I think that it's really a last resort to close these other properties. Um, it, it's, I mean, what we really want is a law enforcement solution to get the bad guys out, uh, as opposed to getting the families out of there. The families that I talked to yesterday, um, she wanted to stay there. I mean, I mean they had complaints, of course, <laughs> Help that they weren't paying rent probably made it attractive. And of course, they gave a lot of explanation as to why they weren't paying rent. There wasn't the property management there. That there was a phone number there left on the door. But then they called the phone number, but nobody answered. <laughs> so, but um, because I thought that the um, the people who were the the these so-called gang members were extracting the rent from them, but the people that came up to me, that was not the case. Uh, yes, so I mean it was well. It's a little hot, but it was relatively nice weather. So people were kind of hanging out outside, and then um, I would I thought that people would be shy about talking to me with the police officers around me, and no, uh, they came right up. Uh, and as some came up, then more came up, then more came up, and their children were with them. And um, it was you know the they wanted to stay there, but they wanted the place maintained and. I think they would continue to be able to pay rent <laughs> if it was, um, but um, you know they had no intention of moving, and uh, um, so um, you know it was it, 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 that was a little different than what I thought. But then, if somebody was intimidated, being intimidated, they obviously wouldn't come up and talk to me. Um. So just today. That video that Vicente obtained from Fox 31, it was connected to a resident who lives in the apartment from a doorbell camera, it seems. We asked the resident whose doorbell camera took that viral video for an interview today. They told us we have to get a password from Councilwoman Danielle Jarinski before they will interview with us. Are wow. you concerned at all about any kind of a controlled narrative being pushed by yeah, I don't understand why somebody would be censored. Why uh, an elected official would be trying to censor someone uh, from basically telling their story. Do you think there's any kind of controlled narrative being pushed out by council in Aurora? I don't know. That was the first I've heard of. So, I mean, I think we're. I think um, my view might be a little different. I, I think I'm trying to you know, be realistic on how I portray this, but I am worried that that there is a tendency inherently to exaggerate and to say this incident that's isolated to three buildings under the same ownership uh, with the same people, concentration of Venezuelan migrants, is the city of Aurora, that the entire city is unsafe, and that, that uh, narrative isn't true, and that's a destructive narrative to you know, the economic health of this city. Is there a reason you believe that we're seeing this in Aurora versus, let's say, Denver? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, I, but I think once we have contained this issue, once, once we bring closure to these, then we need, what we need to do is methodically walk these steps back and say, how did we get here? Because I don't think this just naturally occurred. I think because in going back, you had in the migrant crisis, the height of the migrant crisis, you have Governor Abbott from Texas sending busloads of, of migrants to Denver uh, because historically it's been a sanctuary city. The city of Aurora has not historically been a sanctuary city. We took the position early on that this was a problem borne by federal policy and it will have to be resolved by federal policy and we're not going to acquiesce to it by helping out. And so we chose, number one, uh, that we would not uh, be expending uh, our, our tax dollars to assist in the migrants, but we went one step further and said, 
we would not be a conduit to state or federal funding. So the combination of those policies, I thought that I was really, and we were really, uh, outside the, the boundaries of this crisis. But yet, I think we got, in a, we got the worst of it. And I think the reason why we got the worst of it is because that Denver uh, used its own tax dollars, was a recipient of state and federal assistance, and managed that process. Where I think, and we haven't confirmed this, but I believe that an investigation will show that you had uh, nonprofit organizations uh, who, un, un, unbeknownst to us, it didn't go through us, but had a, either were a recipient of state and/or federal funds, and, and to go directly to them to provide assistance to to migrants who were predominantly Venezuelan. Uh, and to place them uh, in apartments. We didn't know where they placed them, but I believe that they placed them uh, in these apartments in such concentrations that it created a problem. Uh, I think when we walk it back, I think that's what we'll find. Um, and uh, um, it's disappointing. And, um, but, um, so I, I think two things, I think obviously bringing closure to the current crisis, and then making sure it never happens again. You said the only report of a citizen or a resident being targeted was that one home invasion, right, that you've heard of? Oh, no. I, I'm, well, I think it, it, it's a question of, of, you know, what's what's been confirmed. So, right. you know, I'm not, um, we have a, a chief of police, I'll, I'll, I'll let that person handle it. For sure. Um, in an interview with Fox last week, you said, quote, somebody put them there and somebody funded it, suggesting perhaps the federal government is bringing in these gangs. Is this the view of the well, city of Aurora? That, not, sort of bring, so um, I think there's a vetting process at the border whereby, um, for instance, unlike other countries, Venezuela does not share criminal histories with U.S. immigration services. We oftentimes we just don't know who's at the border, and people come across the border illegally. They get arrested, they get processed, they declare uh, political asylum. Uh, they're given humanitarian parole into the United States, pending adjudication of, of their claim, uh, which could be a long time. So, I, I think that um, I think what happened. I think that there's a criminal element that that follows these migrant communities because I mean I think that the culture is such in Venezuela that it's a, essentially a failed state where you had the only role of the police there is to is to suppress the opposition uh, to the Maduro regime and so they're, they're not there to prosecute crime uh, and interdict criminals and so I think you know so this, there's just this system of exploitation there with this criminal element that, that just, you know, uh, that hangs over the population. And so I think some of that element has come up here. And so is when you have, just like when I was yesterday, when almost all 100% Venezuelan migrants, you know, you, you attract, I think, that criminal element to try and exploit them. And so I, I think that that's, um, that's what I was referring to. Not that actually someone, like, planted no, anyone I, I here. No, I think they, 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 I think they put the group there and, uh, you know, maybe there were elements in the group or elements followed uh, the group. Uh, we don't know that, but obviously that's mm -hmm. what the investigation will find out. But no, I do, I think that somebody said, okay, here's 10 criminals, <laughs> put them in there. No, not at all. Um, have you discussed this with Governor Polis, and what's his been like his response been? You know, I've had several conversations state? with the governor about this. I think the, I think the governor understands the the magnitude of the issue. Uh, um, um, I hope that the state wasn't putting people, in, you know, into state dollars, but the state legislature did appropriate two point five million dollars to give to nonprofits, and, and then the question is. Did the, you know, how much money did it, was money um, um, appropriated out of that to Aurora? 
distributed to Aurora nonprofits, because that's the intended purpose. But that was in this session of the legislature, and I'm not sure that that that's in the. I think that's not. It's in the following fiscal year or so. I think that I, I'm not sure if the governor, uh, if if the state did put it. I, I told the governor, I said, if you did, don't put any more. He said, no, you know. But I think that the governor understands the magnitude of the issue. I think the governor misspoke, and I understand what he was trying to say when the governor said it's imaginary. The governor really expressed to me in no uncertain terms more than once, you know, he's, he's a, I'm concerned about this, this situation um, in that its impact, not just on its broad brush, not just on the entire city of Aurora, but on the state of Colorado and the resulting economic impact. So he just said, you know, make sure, let's, let's uh, you know, make sure this is not exaggerated. He felt that Council Member Jernsky was exaggerating the situation. And I think that's what he was referring to imaginary. He was referring to her comments, uh, it, you know, as, as not being um, accurate. Do you feel that Councilman Jerinsky has exaggerated this? I've not really followed her comments, but I think you have to be careful. And I'm not sure if, she, if she's careful as she ought to be. Um, I'm very careful in the sense that I want to be honest and portray this uh, as, as three um, apartment complexes and, and not the entire city, isolated to those, isolated under the same ownership. That, that there is a very specific pattern here in terms of a concentration of uh, Venezuelan migrants and that this is not something that's endemic to our city. Um, just on the theme of Governor Polis, he's offered any and all state assistance to support Aurora. Have there been any conversations about what kind of help you might need among the council members and have you brought those to well, the I governor's attention? He, uh, um, you know, he certainly offered that, that support and whatever he can do and I think um, I'm not sure what uh, a rural police department needs. I, I think we discussed that um, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's something that, that I'll certainly discuss with the rural police department. He mentioned Colorado Bureau of Investigations or something like that. You know, we don't want to use the National Guard. And then uh, he said his, his only other asset really is Colorado Highway Patrol. And I don't think that they would be, I mean, that's his, that's the state police organization. So probably not too effective. But I think the fact that he offered to help in any way it could, I think is meaningful in and of itself. And then Aurora Police has responded on social media to claims that the Hells Angels were coming to Aurora to help the city with the TDA gang or the allegations of the TDA game. Those claims have no credibility, but has your office or city council received communication from members of the Motorcycle Club about coming to the city? No, we've not. Okay. And then just one more quick clarification question. That video that has gone viral showing people with guns appearing to break into a door inside of one of these apartment complexes. We cannot confirm those are members of the TDA gang, correct? Um, the, the, the APD. Correct. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's an how do we, how do we confirm who was in that video? Well, I think, um, uh, you know, that's up to an investigation, but I think, uh, again, whether or not they're TDA or not, and what is relevant is their criminal elements working together in an organized manner that, you know, uh, whatever we want to call them, you know, they're perpetrating crime and they need to be stopped. Why do you think so many people have jumped to the conclusion that they are members of TDA? Well, I think it's kind of, you know, it's a transnational gang, and I think people, um, I think people are scared and, and I think that that gives them more definition to something that is understandable versus something that is not understandable. Is there anything you feel like you have not had a chance to say? No, I, but I don't think it's said enough that, that again, this is, I think there's a, there's a pattern here that this is one owner, one owner's buildings. Um, I think the owner accepted some kind of contract uh, with uh, state or federal agencies through a nonprofit uh, to, to house a, a concentration of Venezuelan migrants, and I think that the uh, criminal element followed, and, and, and the, this is very isolated in the city of Aurora, and, and I'm concerned, and, and I would ask people 
not to take a broad brush about our city and we're going to resolve this and we're going to walk it back to make sure it never happens again.